It was an awesome win. You know, I want to um, start out giving God the glory, first of all, and uh, the way these kids fought, the way they practiced, um, the way the defense kept us in the game, and then how MJ, you know, kind of got his jitters out and came flying in there the second quarter and just sparked us again. And <clears throat> it was fun, man. It was fun to watch. It was a team win. And uh, I thought our fans were fantastic tonight. You know, the, the electricity that you brought, the, the cheering, um, the noise, it, it made a difference tonight. So thank you for that. That was special. And that's what we need every week. And, and when you do that, when you, when you bring the encouragement and the, the crowd noise, you're helping our team win. <clears throat> and so continue to do that because this team just tied the school record for consecutive home wins. And next year, next week against Boston College, we'll have a chance to be the have the longest streak in school history. And um, I want this team to have it. And I want you to witness them doing it and help us along the way. Uh, individually, I, I thought just some guys, you know, um, the three interceptions on defense, the, the constant pressure we put on Hartman <clears throat> throughout the game. Um, some key stops in the game, you know, the goal line stand was huge and then they missed the field goal uh, during the, um, that segment. Uh, Caden Nooncaster, a walk-on punter, comes in for Shane. Shane's thigh was bruised and, and uh, delivered, you know, his first college game punting. You know, did a trem tremendous job. Chris Dunn, um, automatic again and gave us that two-possession lead. Uh, I thought, you know, Keon Lassane had some great catches out there tonight. Devin Carter, big time contact catch. It's just a team win. And uh, that's what it takes to beat a good team. And Wake Forest is a good football team, well coached team with good players. And so that was uh, a really good win for our program tonight. Questions? Go ahead, James. <clears throat> hey, Dave, uh, congrats on the win. Um, I, I don't mean this literally, but it felt like after the Syracuse game, you guys are kind of left for dead a little bit. just. With everything around the program, I mean, that type of a performance and, and, and just the outcome. Can you just discuss where you guys are at right now, being able to come back with, with these two wins, you know, after that performance coming out of the bye week? Yeah. Well, you know, I think <clears throat> obviously we had high expectations. And, you know, when, when um, we lost Devin Leary and then um, had to go to Syracuse, and for those of you that were there, I think you'll know where I'm coming from. We, we walked into a firestorm there. Um, we hadn't had a bye. We were beat up. <clears throat> it was the loudest environment um, that we've played in this year with a new quarterback. We had a lot of false start problems. I mean, you saw that today with Tennessee at Georgia, similar for their offense. And they were healthy. You know, they played Wagner, and then they had a bye week, and then they played us. So that was a very difficult setup going into that game. And um, as far as being left for dead, I don't know what you really mean by that. There's a lot of football left in this season. These kids are going to keep playing. We're not going to quit. And if people want to quit watching us, then that's up to them. But these guys just keep playing. They got guts. They got heart. And I'm proud to be their coach. It's fun to watch. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> Go ahead, Andrew. Dave, obviously this – you know, the situation and the circumstance of what happened to Devin is never something that you guys would have wanted to be in or see, but just what can you say about the way MJ has kind of stepped up and seen this opportunity that's been put in front of him with what's happened? Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do ask for any more. I mean, a true freshman quarterback just beat Sam Hartman, who's, you know, I don't know how old Sam is, but Sam's a great player for Wake's been playing a long time and for a true freshman to be able to, to lead a team over their quarterback. Those were two good quarterbacks on the field. But he's done it um, <clears throat> in practice. He's done it in the games. He's He's got the players playing hard for him. They believe in him. He's taking care of the football. With the exception of one delay a game, I thought he really managed the clock. Um, got us in and out of some plays. And he's way ahead of where he probably – we thought he would be at this point in his career. So super proud of him. Corey, go ahead. Dave, it's not just been MJ, though. Obviously, the true freshmen are showing up all over the place with Michael Allen getting a yeah. good amount of runs tonight. And then, obviously, Toronto Simmons did come back. He didn't have as big of a result tonight as he did last week. But you know, what can you say about, about those guys stepping up and you know, 
being a huge part of the team's resurgence now. Yeah, you know, um, they got fresh legs and they're fast guys, you know, and so they give you a change of pace. Michael Allen's been impressive. Um, you know, Terrell didn't have the catches, but he blew the top off the coverage twice and scared their corners and got a PI call out of one of them. And so it helps when you can loosen people up that way. <clears throat> but yeah, to answer your question, three pretty good true freshmen out there are playing on offense right now. So that's exciting for the future. Luke Takat, go ahead. Dave, you mentioned uh, Keon's catch on the goal line and the long one, and also uh, Devin, but, and uh, Daryl Jones had the two in the end zone, the one where MJ extended the play, and then the other where he went up and got a 50-50 ball. What's been the key to the development of your receivers where they've been able to go and make those kind of play? I mean, those are some game-winning plays tonight that you weren't necessarily getting at times earlier in the year. What's been the key to their development? You know, I think just sticking with it, Luke. You know, I think <clears throat> when you make mistakes here in our program, we talk about them. You know, whether it's framing the catch, seeing the ball touch your fingers, tucking it quicker, you know, timing your jump better, your, your eye tracking, or maybe it's ball placement by a quarterback. <clears throat> we just keep working on it. Sometimes it's a confidence thing, you know, guys, sometimes a body catch instead of, we call it Dennis Rodman catching, you know, going up and snatching a ball like you would on a rebound. And it's something we challenge the guys to do, to have that kind of confidence, to go up and snatch a football out of the air. <clears throat> and you're starting to see that. I think Keon's playing with tremendous confidence right now. He had a great week of practice, so. I'm happy for Daryl because he had a chance last week to make a play in the end zone and didn't. And it's good to see him respond with two catches in the end zone today. <clears throat> Luke, go ahead. Dave, you mentioned the, the consecutive home winning streak. What is it about this place uh, and these fans that allows you guys, maybe gives you guys a little extra edge when play? Well, you know, when the, when the Carter's full and it's rocking like it was tonight, it's hard, man. I mean, we got really tight sidelines, so the fans are right on top of the bench. The student section uh, is right over there, you know, in their ear and yelling at them. Our parents are right behind them yelling at them, I hope. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's, it's a great environment when it's full. <clears throat> and as far as, you know, the players, I think, you know, they enjoy playing at home. It's, it's a great field. You know, everyone has, I guess, you know, their affinity for their routine you have at home, but it's a big deal. You know, I think we're fifth or sixth in the country right now and I'd like to keep it going for a long time. Andrew, you're up. Dave, you mentioned Chris Dunn already, but, uh, you know, having a, gr a great kicker is not something that you can take for granted in college football. What does it do for you guys as a coaching staff and really, I think, for the whole team to have somebody that you can feel that – confident he's going to go out there and put points in the board. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> obviously I've lived the other side of this thing, you know, so for me it's an incredible luxury to have Chris Dunn, um, and I'm so happy for him, you know, he's been through a lot, and to have the year he's having, this is why he came back, you know, for this extra season to be the best kicker in college football, and that's what he is right now, and nobody has one better than we do right now. He is really performing at a high level. Short kicks, long kicks, you know, the flight, the, the timing, operation time, the whole thing. Super proud of him and happy for him right now. <clears throat> All right, James, we'll have the last question for Coach. Yeah, Dave, you, you held those guys at 17 rushing yards. What was the key to that? And, and also, can you just discuss the, the, I think it was the first and goal from the one where they got zero points on, just how, how big that drive was early on? Yeah, well, I think, you know, the front deserves credit for a couple of things. One, knocking them back and getting off blocks. That was something we talked a lot about this week with shedding blocks. And then second, the tackling. We tackled really well tonight in the box, and, and their backs had nowhere to go. And when they had a little daylight, guys closed those gaps up and got off blocks and finished with the tackles. Yeah, I mentioned that earlier. When they got down to the one, and then we knocked them back, knocked them back, knocked them back again, and then they missed the field goal. That was a huge moment in the game. So showed a lot of resiliency and toughness and grit, and that's what we're made of. So it was great for them to do that defensively. It's been an area of the field we haven't been as good. We've done a lot of really good things on defense this year. Red zone defense was an area we wanted to improve, and that happened tonight. Thanks, Coach. All right, see you.